Hello and welcome to Board Game Ninja. Today we would like to take you on a cruise on a cold river in the Nordic countries. The cruise lasts a whole week and you are the tourist guide. Take your guests on exotic trips like polar bear watching, ice fishing, the local brewery or even to see the spectacular northern lights. In this roll and ride, you fill your guide boats with tourists and take them on excursions. You will get points depending on the number of tickets sold, but you can get all kinds of bonuses and advantages, so think of a strategy fast. The guide with the most points at the end wins the game. Riverside is a game for 1 to 6 players. It takes up to 25 minutes and you can play it with people aged 10 and up. I guess it would be playable for a smart 8 year old, but there are a lot of stats to track, so maybe it will be a little less fun. Riverside is a roll and ride with a board. Take the two larger end tiles and place them some distance away from each other. Draw 5 times 2 tiles and place them on both sides of the river, like this, starting at the harbor. Connect the end tile and your river is ready. For a longer experience, you can also add the two tiles with the blue plus shield. Place the ship on the start space and the captain tile in the middle of the table. Every player gets a score pad and a pencil. Choose a player to become the captain and you are ready to begin. Every round the captain rolls the dice. The green die is placed in the heating area above the captain. Sort the remaining dice from low to high and place them below the captain's tile. The middle die indicates the temperature, or median. All dice higher than this are also moved to the heating area above the captain. These will cost you heat if you want to use them. We will come back to that. Move the cruise ship the number of spaces equal to the median. The ship follows the dotted line. Now the fun starts, as all players simultaneously decide which die they want to use on their sheets. So let's take a look at your sheet. There are six guide boats on your sheet, each corresponding to one of the colors of the dice. These are the excursions that you can organize. Fill in the seats according to the pips of the die that you have chosen. You can use the dice on the bottom of the captain's dial for free. If you want to use a dial in the heating area, that is above the captain, you also need to cross out the fire symbols at the top of the sheet. Using a die for five seats heats your engine with five flames. But of course they fill up seats nicely. You have 14 fire symbols, so use them wisely and don't forget to use them. The green die refers to the northern lights and naturally it is special. You can choose to add the value of the green die to the value of the die that you have already picked. You do this by crossing out fire symbols equal to the value of the green die. When you cross out all the seats on a row, you have sold that ticket. Cross it off and get the bonus. In this column, you find the bonus that you will get. Typically, the bonus consists of crossing out one or two seats on another boat. Choose your die strategically for the best result. Let me give you an example. You can choose the yellow two to cross out the last seats on this row, or you can choose the brown four to cross out this entire brown row and, as a bonus, cross out the last two yellow seats. You can place the tourists on any row that you like, as long as you fill them from left to right. You even can divide the tourists over several rows from one die. You don't even have to finish one row before you start on the next. Why is this important? Because there's one extra bonus that you can get in the third and fourth row of every guide boat. If you fill both pink seats in a boat, you get the once per game bonus of that guide boat. Cross out this square to show that it is available for you and cross out the bonus when you use it. Don't forget about these, because these can change your score significantly. Here you can add three to the die that you chose for free. And here you can visit an extra village during excursions. The next phase after every player has filled their seats is when you go on an excursion and score points. Look on the board at the space with the cruise ship. Your excursion can go up to three spaces away from the cruise ship to visit one of the piers. Next to the piers are the icons of the excursions that you can bring your passengers on. For instance, here you can go ice fishing or on a polar bear safari. Pick one and multiply the number of tickets that you have filled for this excursion with the value of the excursion on the board. Fill in the amount here. But there's a catch. 
Whenever you go on the same excursion again, the value filled in should be higher than the previous value. I mean, you have to agree that when you have already been on a polar bear safari before, you will want to see something more spectacular, like a mother bear with cubs or something, the next time you go. A special mention goes to the stave churches at the bottom of the sheet. These are typical churches from the Nordic region. Whenever you visit a stave church, you count all tickets sold on all boats and multiply that with the value next to the stave church. Sometimes you want to visit an excursion that is just out of reach of the cruise ship. You can do this three times during the game by crossing out these icons at the top of your sheet. Now you can reach one step further, four steps from the cruise ship. After all players have taken their passengers on an excursion, the next round begins. The captain rolls the dice again, places them above and below the captain tile, and every player chooses the die they want to use this time. The cruise ship sails on until finally the anchor space is reached. The game ends immediately. Like with any roll and write, the sheets are quite helpful with the scoring. Add up the cross ticket values for every boat and write them in the space next to the boats. Then add up all the scored points at the piers and write these down as well. In the last space, you write down the total. Do this for every boat and add them all up. On to the stave church's boat. Add up both values and note it down. Now look at which of your boats scored the lowest and write that value down here. Add them up for the captain value. The player with the highest captain value gets an extra 15 points and the player with the lowest value minus 15 points. Now you can add both of the values for the grand total. The player with the most points is the winner, but to put it all in perspective, look up your score and see how you did as a tour guide. Do you have to explain yourself or are you invited to sit at the captain's table? Riverside is a welcome addition to the roll and ride genre. The game board gives a central focus point to the game and it makes it less abstract and individual than many others of this kind. Playing simultaneously keeps you busy the whole game, so there is little to no downtime. Because the board is laid out at the start, you can plan in advance which piers to visit and which excursions to take. The element that each excursion should be better than the previous excursions makes up for more planning than most other roll and rights. On the player sheet, there are enough options to diversify the path each player takes, and we have yet to discover the golden strategy, if there is one. Do you choose to fill the short rows first so you can score high points from the start, or do you go for the big bonuses that will give you advantages later on? On average, you can visit between 8 to 12 locations on the whole trip, so you cannot count on filling all the excursions on your sheet. But it doesn't pay to ignore one or more boats, because that will ruin your captain's score and give you 15 point penalty in the end. We enjoyed this game and played it quite a few times with our 11 year old. Roland rights are usually nice and compact and Riverside is no exception. So let's go on a cruise and see some walruses. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video and while you're at it, give us a like. Hope to see you on the next video. Bye.